Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Most people don't realize that a fairly sizable number of businesses don't really need yours in particular. I love when they do threats because they never expect you to call their bluff and then they're stuck with the problem. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. If you want to change companies, don't let the door hit your butt on the way out. I work in a small company delivering potable water to people who don't have access to either city water or a private well. So we deliver to the same customers pretty much every week. Some customers are great and go out of their way to make deliveries easier or at least make sure that they don't make them any more difficult than they have to be. A few customers just don't give a crap and expect us to make deliveries no matter what they do to make things inconvenient. Recently, one customer over the last couple of years had made several changes to their property that made making deliveries significantly more difficult. I had spoken to my boss about them and he laid out the conditions that would need to be met before he would consider dropping a paying customer. And they were literally just barely with the limits. And to their credit, they did keep up with their bills, damn it. I dreaded seeing their name on the delivery list every other week. Then they changed to wanting deliveries every week because their children were moving into the house as well. After that, payments started being more sporadic. The checks we were getting changed names from the homeowner to their daughter. My boss only takes cash or check, not credit cards, as he feels no compulsion to give any money to CC companies or to increase prices and pass the cost on to the customer. One day, while I was in the office doing some end-of-day tasks, the phone rang. Caller ID was this problem customer. Boss answered, and eyes dropped. It was the daughter. She wanted to start paying by credit card. Boss said no. Then she decided to drop her threat to change companies. Such hope in my heart as I saw the boss's face turn red. He hates bullies and being bullied. Boss immediately agrees that that would be best and hangs up on her. Walks over to the delivery schedule calendar and crosses their name off the list. Two days later, I got called into the office to hear a message left by the daughter begging us to make deliveries again. She apologized and everything. Turns out she discovered that we were by far the cheapest option for them. One of the things that made them frustrating to deliver to was not just the physical difficulty of the delivery, but they only have a 350 gallon holding tank. It was a lot of work and time to deliver such a small amount of water. And we have the lowest minimum delivery rate in town. While all the other companies around town are at about the same price per gallon, most other companies have an 800 gallon minimum delivery rate, where our minimum at the time was only 500 gallons. The boss and I shared a chuckle over the call. I don't believe he bothered with calling her back. While they may or may not have thought of themselves as problematic, they rarely do, if you can't handle the consequences of a decision not going the way you want, don't make the damn threat. And our second story. Snap, snap, get to it. Um, that's not my employee. So I'm one of those I visit here so I know the aisles person, so sometimes elderly people will ask me, excuse me, do you know? Yep, probably, let's go hunting. I also have bad social phobia, but it only happens in crowds, bad ones. Anyway, I went shopping at this big red store that's native to my state, crowded to the brim. Oh no. I huddle in my awesome warm sweater and make the trek. As I'm exiting an aisle, I hear snap, snap. Uh huh. Oh, lady snapping fingers. Huh? Okay. Well, I move a bit, thinking she's getting impatient and trying to get in the aisle. I had to get pizza anyway. Nope, she glares and then says, Well, well, what? Snap, snap. I need to be shown where an item is. Snap, snap. Get to it. I blink slowly. I'm just a bit slow on the uptake before I understand. Oh, no, I don't work here. Ha. <laughs> kind of wished I did, actually. Her whole face turns purple with rage like Uncle Vernon's face in Harry Potter. Well, not really, but you get me. What? I bet you do. And rant and rant and rant. I'm pretty much hyperventilating here. I have two reactions to people yelling at me, tears or harsh sarcasm. Unfortunately, she caught me on a very bad day when I didn't feel well, so I glare at her, huff, then say, you know what? Cue a grin from her thinking she'll get her way. I don't even live in this town, you dolt. No farking way do I know what the frick's here. 
much less who you even are. I don't rightly care anyway. I almost started crying anyway. Oh, that set her right off, telling my manager, blah, blah, blah. Did I mention my cousin works here? Yeah, well, she does. Amazon is queen. Hitting six foot three in heels over her older cousin, she waltzes up and asks what the dealio is. Angry lady proceeds to ream me out, saying how I cussed at her. I literally did not. I said what I typed. And how I'm an awful employee. Manager pops up from nowhere, looks confused, then says, um, that's not my employee. Duh. She turns red, stammers out how I should be more helpful before shoving her basket into mine and running off into the distance. On the bright side, I have pizza bites. And our next story. How to ruin business, scare the hell out of someone, and make them a hero for the day. This happened around 10 years ago at a medium-sized furniture store I used to run, and it was one of the scariest days of my life. I'm sitting in the office just starting my lunch when there's a, suddenly a commotion and a woman rushes into the office and ducks and covers next to a bookshelf saying, I need to hide her, he's coming for her, and he's got a gun. What the F? I couldn't believe what I was hearing and instantly went into crisis mode. I told the two employees that were coming in to see what was going on, what was happening, and to calmly get everyone back in the warehouse area and shut off all the lights immediately. We weren't terribly busy and they had it done pretty quickly. It wasn't until I dialed 911 and started to the front door that I realized the absolute dread of my situation. I've never been so scared in my life as when the operator asked where I was in the store and I replied, going to lock the front door? My voice was shaking and my mouth suddenly went dry. The front of the store was about 30 feet of glass and this guy could be right there and see exactly what I was doing. I was so terrified that all I could think was this guy was going to see me and shoot me. I got the door locked and hid behind some furniture that was close by because there was nothing else I could do with them seeing me. I was peeking out from my hiding spot and suddenly at least a half a dozen police cars come screeching to a stop in front of my stores with armed officers screaming, get down on the ground over and over. I can't express the relief I felt at that very second, realizing he was just a couple of feet from my store. He was cuffed in a police car in no time. I then went and opened the door for the police and interview with a couple of them to tell them what happened and all that. They also had a couple of officers interview the woman who caused all of this. That's where it got interesting. It turned out that the woman and the man were very, very high and there was never a gun. They knew something was wrong with the story because they dealt with these two many times in the past. I never did find out why she did this, but I'll assume she was hallucinating. At this point, my store's basically shut down with the front completely closed off for the rest of the day by police cars and ambulances to take the two to the hospital before jail. Even though there never was a gun and I was never in any true danger, I got a lot of hugs and thank yous from both customers and employees that day. One of the officers even grabbed me by the shoulder and told me good job. I was really pissed at the woman for doing that for a few minutes, but then I realized how good I felt knowing that I could do that knowing that I would walk toward a potentially life-threatening situation if I had to. And our last story. Neighbor complains about maintaining a hedge wall and then has to construct a wooden fence. This story happened about a decade ago when I was still a teenager and used to live in my parents' house. We are migrants and are on good terms with all the neighbors since the 90s, but we do have a reputation in the neighborhood of frequently undertaking ambitious DIY home improvements and in an atypical manner to what locals expect. Our house is separated from the neighbors with a living hedge, walls of cypress trees that grow on our property. At the time of this story, we already lived in the house for the better part of a decade with the same neighbors and the same cypress trees. One day, out of the blue, one of the neighbors sees my mom working in the garden and starts complaining about the state of the living hedge on her side of the property. We usually trim the hedge only from our side and most of the top that we can reach. The neighbor complains and demands us to trim the hedge from their side as well. In her eyes, as the hedge wall is planted on our property, it's 100% our responsibility and they're tired of maintaining it from their side. The altercation is very brief as my mother surprisingly quickly replies, okay, and walks off grinning. Unbeknown to the neighbor, we already were planning to cut down the hedges to the stump so that they could regrow anew as the existing hedge was very old and was not particularly sightly. 
Previously, we postponed these works as we didn't want to upset the neighbors, but this demand provided the perfect excuse. So the next day, while the neighbors are at work, we cut down all the hedges surrounding our property to barely above ground. As we're finishing clearing up the trimmings, the neighbors come back home from work, shocked to discover the hedge practically gone. They look around and realize that with the hedge wall gone, their whole backyard, kitchen, living room, and bedroom are on full display through the windows. The neighbor questions what we've done and why, as they would no longer have any privacy in their own home. My mom, without a beat, replies, we fixed the problem. The hedge will no longer need trimming from your side, and goes back to clearing up. Within a week, the neighbors came back to us and asked for permission to construct a wooden fence on our property to protect their privacy. We happily agreed as long as they paid for it all, as we didn't mind waiting a couple of years for the hedge to regrow. Our privacy was much less impacted. They built the fence within the week and it provided a good surface for some vine flowers to grow instead of the cypress trees that my mother had wanted to plant for a long time. Edit. People are concerned that the neighbors would be able to claim some of the land as theirs. This is not the case as the property delineation markers are still there and nobody would ever move or tamper with them. When the fence was being constructed, we made sure that this was the case. I should have originally specified that they effectively paid and constructed a fence for us that we legally own. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.